Father God, we commit these verses into your loving hands. We pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. Use me, Lord. I submit myself to you. Lord, I pray that this will be a message that will touch the lives of many people today, transform them, and help them to know their high calling in God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many people are you going to call the God? How many of you are the children of God or the sons of God? On what authority you are saying it? On what authority you are saying it? This verse says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Today, my sermon is entitled, The Spirit-Led Life. Aviyanavaral Nadatta Padigra Vaadkai. I'm going to give you some four or five examples of how the Spirit of God leads people. I want you to carefully listen and compare our lives, whether we are led by the Spirit of God. Nam namudiya vaadke sodhithi, nam andavurudiya avinal nadatta padigiruma enri parisilikke vendum. God expects us to be led by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God has been given to us permanently to be with us. You know that when Jesus said, I am going, but I am going to send you the Holy Spirit who will be with you forever. Naan pogrein, anal parsutavi anavare ungalukke, endenrekkum ungalod irukkumbadi. Did he say good morning to the Holy Spirit this morning? He was waiting for you. You didn't recognize his presence, isn't it? You didn't know that he is with you. Our Unglod Kudar Kra and Unar Vilaya. Our Patum Pakam Abdi Poitingla. Ungwitla Radur Travarare. Somebody comes to your house and then you ignore him. You don't wish him. You don't talk to him. How will he feel? Our Epidi Unarwar. How will he feel? Our Epidi. This morning, the Spirit of God wants you to know that He is always with you and always willing to guide you, lead you. How He has led people in the past, I want to give you a few examples so that you can also know about it. Do you want to be led by the Spirit of God? Huh? No? Yes or no? Huh? A very feeble yes. Is that, is that your response? How many of you want to be led by the Spirit of God? Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Let him hear it. The Spirit of God is with you. Let him hear it, that you want him to lead you. Okay. Now, do you know that Jesus Christ was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? He was led by the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. Look at Matthew's Gospel chapter 4 and verse 1. Matthew's Gospel chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I think sometimes it surprises us how the Spirit of God can lead us to be tempted by the devil. And here it says, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And the Tamil Yesu Pisasanal Sodhi Ke Padu Dirke Aviyana Varale Vanandaratikku Kondu Poha Pattar. And let me ask you a simple question. How many days he was in the wilderness? 
Huh? Okay. And he, was he alone? Was he alone or with somebody? Huh? What? I couldn't hear. Was was he alone in the wilderness? No. Yes. Who was it? Huh? Yes. There were a lot of animals in the in the wilderness. You know that? And the angels of God were ministering to him. But there were a lot of animals there, but nothing harmed him because he is the creator and everything has to obey him. And so he was there 40 days and he didn't eat anything, he was fasting. After he finished this 40 days, the Bible says that he was full with the power of the Holy Spirit he came. When he went, he went with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. When the temptations were over, he came out with power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we read here. Now, I want to give you another example. In Apost chapter, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. Another example of being led by the Spirit. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. It says, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him. Who said? Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Now I want to just make a small clarification here. Many people think that when you mention the Spirit, they think it is an influence or it is something like we call it. It's not an it, it is he. He is a personality. Holy Spirit is a person. You can grieve him, you can lie against him, you can make him happy, you can obey him, you can disobey him. He is a person. And here we find that the Spirit of God told Peter, he was thinking about a vision that he had. You know the vision. There was a, a blanket that was lowered from heaven, then all kinds of animals were there, and uh, Peter was asked to strike and eat. And Peter said, no, I don't eat any of the unclean animals. But then the voice said, what God has cleansed, made clean, don't you call as unclean. And this vision was given particularly to break the caste barrier or the feeling of high caste, low caste feeling among the people. Today also, in our own country, we have honor killing. You know what is honor killing? Because a person from the high caste married a person from the low caste and then they kill one of them because their honor is affected, that's what they say. I don't know how that honor was affected. But this is in practice in India. Are you going to change it? Will you, give, will you change it? Will you insist that only in your own caste you will marry? Some servant of God asked me to pray for his son. And you know, after saying the born again, spirit filled, this and that and all, finally he said, What is that? And Nadar, Nadamatanga. Huh? After you are born again and filled with the Spirit of God, what is the question of Nadar? Huh?
here Peter was asked to go to a Gentile, a Cornelius and Jews didn't have any contact or any association with the Gentiles. The Gentiles were considered like dogs. That's a fact. When the Canaanite woman came and asked Jesus for the healing of, his do of her daughter, what did he say? Healing is children's bread. How can he throw it to the puppies, the dogs? Meaning that she is from that low caste, she is considered to be dog, equal to dogs. How can I give that? But that woman was humble enough to say, Lord, the puppies can eat the crumbs that fall from the table. And the nai kutigal mejailerin viligra tunikehile sabdan pa adu poda enakhe. Jesus marveled at her faith. Avde viswasate kanda achiriya patar. Then he said, your daughter is healed at the very moment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now Peter has a problem to go to a Gentile's house to pray. Cornelius had a vision. An angel came and told him, call for Peter, who will come and tell you the way of salvation. Already Cornelius was a righteous man, good man, generous man, God-fearing man. That's why God sent an angel. And the angel said, God remembers your prayers, your arms. Devan unnudi chabangaliyum, unnudi dhana dharmangaliyum, avar nenitharali irukkirar, anal ni inna ratchika padula. Ratchika padua dhirukki ni poi Peter anupu, Peter kutitva avar avarunukku solluvar indar. Now a question comes into our minds, why not that angel himself say how to be saved, isn't it? If this work was given to angels, they would have completed the work of salvation long back, you know. There are thousands and thousands of angels. They do completely obey God and do everything He tells them. But he, that work is not given to angels, but only to you and to me. And we have failed in that. In India, you have so many crores of people who are not yet saved. What is your response? Have you obeyed the Lord, the Great Commission, when He said, Go and preach, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have told you. Have we done it? Two thousand years gone by till one of the disciples of Jesus came to India. ரெண்டாயிரம்ஷிகள்ிருக்கிறதுக்குறம்ஷிகளுக்குறம்ஸ்ரீஸ்வரன் அந்த டைமில் இருக்கிற உலகத்தை அவங்க கலக்கிட்டாங்க ஆனால் இன்றைக்கு இருக்கிற நாம் எப்படி இருக்கிறோம் ஆத்ம பாரம் நமக்கு இருக்கா ஆத்மாக்களை குறித்து ஜபிக்கிறோமா இந்தியா ரட்சிக்கப்பட வேண்டும் என்பதே என் இவ் விருப்பமாக இருக்கிறது சித்தமாக இருக்கிறதுன்னு சொல்கிறோமா அதை ஜபிக்கிறோமா டு வி ப்ரே தட் இந்தியா மஸ்ட் பி சேவ்ட் க்ரோர்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் இன் இந்தியா ஆர் கோயிங் டு temples which are not where there is no true god they just go and worship but they have zeal for god if only they know who is the true god they will worship many testimonies are coming now of people who came to know the lord jesus in their deathbed and they knew that jesus is the true god and many of them have accepted jesus christ Tonight you will hear many testimonies at 7 o'clock in um, Satyam, Holy God TV, Comforted TV. You can see Jesus Redeems program by Mohan C. Lazarus Evangelist. And you will hear the testimonies of people 
most of them are from a non-Christian background. How Jesus helped them to receive healing, miracles of healing, tremendous miracles. You will hear it at 7 to 9. Tonight you can watch in the YouTube. And today, now when Peter was confronted by the other people, because this vision was not given to the other disciples, and so they, they thought, how can Peter go and talk to Cornelius? How can he go to the Gentiles' house? And then he has to explain from the beginning, from the time he saw the vision, and then what the Holy Spirit said. Please read. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, <coughs> verses 19 and 20. <coughs> Acts of the Apostles, Apostle Patti, Patambodi Rivade. Pedra and the Darsanati Kuriti Sindhani Pandi Kundri Kil, Avi Anavar. Listen, who said that? Avi Anavar. Ido Moon Rumansher, Unni Thedi Gargil, Ni Yelan the Yerangi, Undruka Sande Hepramal, our Kudapo. When Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. The Spirit of God talked to Peter and specifically told Peter, I have sent them, go with them. Can the Spirit of God talk? Yes. He can guide us. He can talk to us. He can tell us. And so, we find here, He gives a command to Peter to go. He guides us in the ministry. The Holy Spirit guides us in the ministry. I want you to look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Apostle Padimune Renda Vasanam. Apostle Padimune Rende. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Look at that verse. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein I have called them. Our Katharika Aradhani say the Vuvasi to Kundaraka Bodhi, Paranabavim Savalium, Nanalita Ulitika, our Lepriti Vidin Lendre, Parsutaviana Vatirulam Patinar. So the Holy Spirit can guide us in the ministry. The Holy Spirit can guide you and me to, and tell us what to do. Are you willing to obey? Are you willing to obey? When the Spirit of God speaks to you, are you willing to obey? He is always there to guide us. The earlier occasion we saw how Peter was sent to break that caste barrier, the low caste, high caste barrier, by sending him to a Gentile to preach the gospel. And today, I don't know how many people, how many Christians are willing to mingle with the Low caste, high caste system. I tell you in the sight of God, before God, till now I don't know what caste my wife comes from. We were married for 53 years. I don't know her caste. I'm telling you. When are you going to break that caste barrier? Are you willing? Young people, take the challenge. It is a challenge for you to take and do what God likes you to do. Don't go in for your own caste again. Don't go in. You may have to make your father, mother sad maybe, because they are not from this generation, this kind of a situation, but they always think about their own caste. 
but you take a stand for Jesus. Take a stand for Jesus. Break the caste barrier. I said, guidance in the ministry. Here, the Spirit of God spoke to them and said, send Barnabas and Saul for the ministry that I have called them. Send Barnabas and Saul for the ministry I have called them. When they were fasting and praying, the Spirit of God told them. February 25th, 1984. I don't know if you were born at that time. Early morning, the Lord spoke to me from Isaiah 61, 6. He said, you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you as the minister of God. And I obeyed the call. I wrote my letter to leave the factory and to take up the full-time ministry. March 3rd, I was relieved from the factory. March 4th was a Sunday. We had our first Christian City Church service, 1984. Almost 39 years passed and we have come to the 40th year. And the Lord spoke in an audible voice to my wife, feed my sheep. That's also an early morning hour at about four o'clock. <clears throat> In an audible voice, as if a friend would speak to somebody. A clear voice. And that's why we took up the ministry, full-time ministry. The Lord has led us thus far. And the Lord's name be glorified. God guides us in the ministry. Are you willing to obey? That's my question. If the Spirit of God speaks to you, are you willing to obey? Can the Holy Spirit tell you where to go, where not to go? Yes. I want to tell you. Look at Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. And when they have gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Our Phrygia, Kalatia, Nadagalai, Kadandu Pona Bodhi, Asiya Vile Vasanate Sola De Badike, Parasutta Vinale Tade Pandabati. How can the Holy Spirit do that? You may ask. But He is sovereign God. He can tell you where to go, where not to go. It's up to you to obey Him. And here we find that at that particular time, they were told not to come to Asia. Now again, another example I want to say. Every time I am asking you the question, are you willing to obey when the Spirit of God speaks? Another example here. Philip had a great, magnificent ministry in one of the Samaritan villages. Philip had a great healing and deliverance meeting, gospel meeting in Samaria. Now, Suddenly the Holy Spirit said, go to Gaza, to that place. And then there is a man who will be sitting in a chariot and go to him. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Apostle 8, 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go and join the, thyself to the chariot. Acts chapter 8 verse 29. Aviyanavar, ni poi and the radhaturudane serendukal enri pilipudane chanar. The Holy Spirit can speak to us 
the Holy Spirit can guide us, the Holy Spirit can send us, the Holy Spirit can help us, and He gives us the power to be the witness of Jesus Christ. How many of you by heart can say Acts 1 8? How many of you can say by heart without looking at the Bible? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. No one? No one? And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Parsutavi Ungradil Varmode, Ningal Belanad in the Yerselem, Yudea Muludulam, Samaria, Bumi in Kadeshi, but in the Menakasachila, Irpirgal. Nanakira Parsutavi Ungradil Varle, and Aladam Belanle, Yabakum Lava, Vasan Kuran Yabangle. Abdina Ungulukum Parsutavi and Arkan Toda Bavalaki. Isn't it? Otherwise, you will know this verse by heart. You will know it by experience, that you have received power to be His witnesses. To be the witness of Jesus Christ, you need strength, you need power. That's what the Bible says. And only when he, you receive that power, you can be His witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You know, Jerusalem is your own house. You have to be a witness in your own house. And then neighboring Judea, then your marketplace, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Everywhere you go, you are supposed to be a witness of the resurrected Savior Jesus Christ. You must proclaim that Jesus is alive. And Jesus Christ has changed your life. And Jesus Christ can change their life. You know, one 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 amazing thing, none of the religions except Christianity, their gods never said, I love you. You know that? None of their gods. No other god has said, only our god has said, I love you. For God so loved the world, it says. And they are surprised when they hear that Jesus loves you. Have you ever told anyone that Jesus loves them? Hello? If you have not told anyone, please speak to them now. You have got grace time. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Jesus died for them. Jesus is alive. He is, he is help, he willing to help him, help them. The Spirit of God will help you. The, the Spirit of God gives you the power. And one more thing I want to read before I close. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. Apostle Nalu Muppati Onne. I didn't finish the previous ones, you know. That uh, Philip was sent to somebody who was sitting in the chariot. The person who was sitting in the chariot was a minister of Ethiopia. A finance minister of Ethiopia. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship God and he was going back. And then the Lord told Philip, go and join him. And then he was reading the book of Isaiah. And it is, it is said when he was reading, Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And then the minister said, unless somebody explains to me, how will I understand? Then. Philip began to speak about Jesus Christ and gave the gospel. And on the way, the minister said, if this is the gospel and I want to accept it, I want to be baptized. Here is much water. Can I be baptized by you? And he said, if you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died for you, He rose again on the third day, is alive today, and you want to receive Him as your Savior, repenting of your sins, then you can take baptism. He said, I believe, I receive, I repent. And both of them went into the water. Philip baptized him and he came out 
something happened when they came out you know what happened something miraculous happened philip was not found as soon as they got out of the water philip was not found philip was transported to another place by the spirit of god he was found in azotus another place the spirit has trans taken him there that was something wonderful isn't it the spirit of god can transport us without visa without ticket without any permit he can take us anywhere he wants that's what happened that's what happened there this is all spirit of god did in the first century and now in this century also he can do it now with the same yesterday today and forever now we were talking about acts chapter 4 verse 31 please read ha what happened they were all filled with the holy spirit and what did they receive they received boldness they spoke, spoke the word of god with boldness the spirit of god gives you boldness hallelujah if you are afraid to speak about jesus you what you need is the spirit of god to strengthen you and when you pray the lord will give you somebody said by heart act chapter I mean luke chapter 11 verse 13 look at don't look at the bible tell me from memory luke 11 13 yes huh at least look and say look 11 13 என்ன கொடுப்பாரு அதை விட்டுட்டீங்க அதான் சத்தமா சொல்றோம் பரிசுத்தாவைய கொடுப்பது அதிக நிச்சயம் இல்லவா இஃப் யூ தென் பீயிங் ஈவல் இட்ஸ் டாக் அபவுட் மீ அண்ட் யூ ஈவல் I am evil. If you then being evil, how to know good gifts unto your children? How much more the Holy God will give the Holy Spirit to them that? What is the condition? Ask Him. What is the condition? Ask Him. Have you asked Him? He will give you. If you ask Him, He will give you. Then you will have the boldness to proclaim the gospel. you will have power when the holy spirit comes upon you holy spirit is a person who directs us in our life today we have seen many occasions where the holy spirit has led them jesus was taken to the wilderness to be tempted by the holy spirit and then the holy spirit told Paul I mean Philip to go to the Ethiopian minister and uh, we find that uh, the holy spirit leads our lives daily and uh, we find that the holy spirit breaks the caste barrier and then guides our people and when they were praying with the holy spirit gave them ministry guidance who should go for ministry specific person the holy spirit gives directions you know wonderful thing is when peter was waiting to understand about the vision the holy spirit said three people are coming to you exactly the holy spirit is not ambiguous he is very certain his ways is the way he deals with us is very specific and certain no ambiguity three people are coming to see you 
and go with them. Go with them. I have sent them. If the Holy Spirit tells you now, will you go? Hello? Lingay Vitla Gunja Velerki Alam Murchti Venna Patama. What is our response? The Holy Spirit can guide us every day of every life, every minute of every day. He is alive, He is with us. Jesus said, He is with you always. And after Jesus has risen, you see, when Jesus was physically alive, He can be in one way, only one place. But now, because He has risen and the Holy Spirit has come, we can have Him, the Spirit of God, any place, any time of any country. You may say, is He in Andhra Pradesh? Yes, sir. Is He in Karnataka? Yes, sir. Is he in Madhya Pradesh? Yes, sir. Is he in Mugaper? Yes, sir. Will he guide you? Yes, sir. But will you obey him? That's the question. When he talks to you, he will not talk in some kind of an ample with an amplifier blaring at your ears. Gentle. He is a gentleman. His voice is gentle, he's lowly. He will sometimes usher in your heart. You may not even know is it the Holy Spirit is speaking? Yeah, he's very soft, very quiet. He will speak. In your heart he will speak. He will impress upon you that he is speaking. And then he expects you to obey. This morning, are you willing to be led by the Spirit of God? He is available. He is willing. Are you willing? Shall we look to God in prayer? Shall we pray? Nam Jabi Poma? Those who would say, I want to be led by the Spirit of God, then every eye is closed and every head is bowed. Just stand up where you are. If you say to the Holy Spirit, yes, I want to be led by the Spirit of God, totally those who will obey Him, stand up. I'm not asking everybody to stand up, only those who will hear His voice and obey Him. Only them, because His voice will be tender, loving and kind. And He will speak to you in a gentle way. He's a gentleman. He will not blare at your ears. He will not shout. He will just ask you, will you, will you obey me and do His will? Oh my, have you misunderstood my question? I didn't ask everybody to stand up. I only asked those who are willing to obey when the Holy Spirit speaks to them. Only those. Only those. Does it mean that all of you are willing? All of you are willing to be guided by the Holy Spirit? Okay, let's pray now. Dear loving Holy Spirit of God, we are surprised to find out in the Acts of the Apostles that the wonderful way you have led your God's children, you have guided them in the ministry you have broken the caste barrier. You have told them what to do in any situation. You have empowered your disciples to be the witnesses of Jesus Christ. And we know that you are with us every minute of every day. You are with us. And Lord, you are expecting us to obey you when you speak to us. And Lord, see here. There are so many who are standing, who say that we are willing to obey the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are here. And Lord, look at them. Look at them, all of them. And Lord, I thank you for this army of people. 
the army of God. I call them the army of God. Then through them you are going to do great things in the days to come. I believe it, Lord. Through them you are going to do great things. These are all the army of God and they will be filled with the Spirit of God and will go out to do what God wants them to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us. Bless them and empower them and help them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.